beautiful Wednesday morning it is, and it's uh, time for uh, Off the Press. It's a segment where we have a quick review of stories making the headlines across the country, and I uh, hope that you can join us. So we'll uh, have uh, two people that we're going to be speaking with this morning. Uh, first, uh, Mr. Demola Kimbola, the publisher of the Podium uh, Media. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Thank nice you very much for joining us. Uh, we're also going to be speaking with uh, Mrs. Aisha Yesufu. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, we have a couple of stories. I believe that there's so much, you know, that um, Nigerians want to hear about and want to talk about this morning. So hopefully those stories also make the headlines this morning and we will get to share. Um, we're kicking off with the Daily Times newspapers this morning. Let's see what we can uh, find over there as many of them as we can share, or the nation, I beg your pardon, um, newspapers this morning. Um, as many of the stories as we can share, service chiefs, 774,000 jobs, lawmakers take on Buhari. Also on the nation this morning, Speaker Toak Pabio list rep contractors. Uh, apparently he had given them 48 hours to list um, all the members of the National Assembly that had been getting contracts from uh, the um, NDDC. Why Third Mainland Bridge Must Close, that's also on the Nation newspapers this morning. And also CBN approves 50 billion Naira revival appeal for textile industry. Akere Dulu offers olive branch, uh, that's uh, with regards to Yondo State elections. And for Edo State, Obaseki will lose for poor performance, says Commissioner. Um, also, PDP has the best candidate for election. That's also with the Edo State elections. Um, I'm, I'm, I think I can start uh, with uh, Mr. Demola, um, Akimbola this morning. Um, any of the stories that you want to quickly um, share your thoughts on? Okay, thank you. Um, once again, it's my pleasure to be here. I want to look at the issue of Undo State, um, the primary election of the APC we just held on Monday. Yeah. Um, the fallouts we're beginning to see, their contentions, their controversies over how Akedoli emerged as the candidate of the APC, first with the mode of the primary. Most of the contestants, they wanted a direct primary, but the party insisted on going with indirect primary. Um, the Unity Forum, which is the biggest forum in those states, has come out to say, look, there are about 10 or 11 of us we are not happy with what has happened. And the appeal committee of the party should be opening uh, in Abuja today to review uh, the appeal. Again, this is an issue that we need to talk about as a country. Are we building institutions or we are building personalities? Okay, APC is a ruling party. Why won't it be able to follow its own constitution? Why won't it be able to allow due process? If there's no internal democracy within APC, what hope do we have for Nigeria as a country? So yeah. I, 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 I want to believe that APC will put us in order so that um, we may avoid crisis in Ondo State. I want you to okay. quickly share on this, um, since we're talking about the Ondo State election. It, doesn't, it, it feels like it's not the first time we're hearing about um, um, situations like this with regards to elections and the APC. Why yeah. do you think that has continued over time? Yeah, because the APC has proved to, to, to be a party that doesn't respect its own laws, okay? The, uh, even, even as the ruling party, the APC hasn't done very well in terms of entrenching the right guidelines, in terms of complying with relevant procedures. The APC, look at what happened in the state, okay? I mean, that was clearly avoidable, okay? On those states, it's also going to be a very explosive um, situation if it's not well mandled. Okay, because here we have a governor who has not done very well going by, by, by the assessment of the people of the state. Okay, but what we've heard is that the party hierarchy didn't want to rock the boat. Uh, they were trying to say, okay, in Lagos State, you didn't retain your governor because Ambody wasn't given a second term. Uh, those state, the same thing. So don't let it happen in those states. That is pure sentiment. The party should be allowed. The party members should be allowed to choose who will represent them. Okay, that, good. That, that's um, we also yeah. went through other stories from um, the speaker to uh, Godzilak Pabio, um, asking him to uh, yeah. list the uh, rep contractors who have been collecting money from the 
um, um, NDDC or rather getting contracts on the NDDC. NDDC. I'm, I'm going to bring in um, Aisha Yusufu now to quickly share on this one. Um, also, Third Milan Bridge, uh, which is uh, going to be closed from Friday, Edo State Elections. Um, there's, there's so much, of course. Issa Funtua was also buried. Um, Aisha Yusufu, good morning once again. Thank you very much for being a part of our, our discussion this morning. Good morning. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, just looking at the different headlines here, yeah, the the one of the speaker, I mean, uh, to Akpabio uh, telling him to bring the list of contractors, this is something that we've seen over and over again. It's just that uh, they're just toying with Nigerians. And, and I mean, all of them, they know what they're doing. They just, uh, they're just playing with the senses of citizens whom they know that uh, are too docile to actually uh, stand up and, and, and make demands. And at the end of the day, it, the corruption you, you find that to be swept away, or the, uh, issues we, they will be forgotten. And it is high time we begin to focus on issues, especially corrupt. Uh, when it comes to allegation of corruption, these are not things that should just be uh, swept under uh, under the under the t table. Uh, it's, it's really sad for me, you know, just looking at all of these headlines. And at the end of the day, and what is more sad is the fact that they're just going ahead as, as headlines, and that will be there will be nothing uh, about it. But you see, overall, on this uh, on this whole uh, 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 nation's front page, if you go down to the bottom, you see where they say, or your opens all schools. And for me, that's quite worrisome. All schools, meaning primaries, uh, uh, nursery and everything how are the kids going to maintain a social distancing are they, are they would they be able to have the capacity to be able to do uh, what what they ought to do talking about that capacity also quickly look at the the picture that we have there of the Ondo state governor and other people that there's no social distancing yes yeah, you're wearing masks masks is not the end of uh, end of it or but you see, we've not taken on the big one. If I may just quickly add, uh, this yeah. service G774, 774,000 jobs, lawmakers take on Buhari, right? Uh, we've spoken several times of, on this. But beneath that, you see where the president rejects Paul to sack security top brass. And also at the bottom, you see 10 killed, 16 ab abducted in Kaduna and Niger uh, communities. And for me, I would really like to say that. If the National Assembly, honestly, if they really, really, uh, uh, they, 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 they are really, they have the guts, let me put it that way. It is not even the service chief they should be focusing on. Now, it's the president himself. By now, Buhari ought to have been impeached if we have a National Assembly that has its honors together. Okay, and I want you to go on. Um, what happens if the president ignores this call that they've made? for the service chiefs to resign. Um, the presidency already put out a statement yesterday saying that it was left for the president to either sack or hire service chiefs. And so what what would be your reaction if the president goes on to ignore the Senate at a time like this? The thing is that the president has, this is not the first time they are calling for the for the service chiefs to be sacked. Remember, they even called them at one time to come uh, to the National Assembly. So over, over time, several Nigerians, several have been asked for the sack of the service chief, but the president hasn't. But the issue is that what I'm trying to say right now is the fact that the, the problem right now is even no longer that of the service chief. The problem is with the commander in chief. We, don't, we have a failure as a commander in chief. We don't have we have somebody who doesn't have the capacity to be in that office. And the National Assembly, what they're supposed to be looking at that is the impeachment of the president. And that's it's as simple as that. There are no two ways about it. If if the president knows that there are consequences for bad behavior, definitely he will begin to do, do the right thing. As we are right now, the president has not been given incentive to do the right thing because over time and again he has. He has uh, uh, he has acted with his day. He hasn't done the right thing. He hasn't been competent, and he has gotten away with it. So it's very easy for for president to bring out a statement and say that uh, the call to uh, to uh, the hiring and firing of service chief is as his prerogative. It's the way he wants it to be done. He knows that there will be consequences. Of course, the president will speak will be will be, will be six, uh, speaking a different tune. Will be singing a different tune, and that's where the national assembly uh, ought to get his onion together and begin to do the right thing for the sake of Nigeria. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Kingbola, can you also quickly uh, share on, on that uh, story? Yeah, I think for the first time, most Nigerians are praising the Senate for doing the right thing, okay? And like just, um, like Aisha said, 
The National Assembly should live up to expectation, should do its job. It is not just the service chief, the president has proved to be so incompetent in the area of security and in several other areas, and an active National Assembly that knows what it's doing, that has not been, comp that has not been compromised, should by now be discussing the impeachment of Mr. President. Mr. President was elected based on certain expectations, which sadly have not been met. What are we doing about this? Okay, so really, the service chief should have gone long before now. If the president has, 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 has refused to do the needful, probably he then needs to put his head on the line. That's it. Okay, we'll uh, definitely be following up and we'll see where this uh, story leads. Let's now move on to the yeah. Punch newspapers this morning and see um, as many of the stories that we can also find over there. Recovered vehicles auctioned to the presidential villa and ministries, says Magu. Also on the Punch this morning, presidency disagrees with the National Assembly, or rather as the National Assembly Act Service Chiefs to resign. Um, uh, Geoffrey Oyema, SGF, PTF members and ministers undergo test. Also, Akpabio giving 48 hours to name lawmakers awarded NDDC contracts. As the federal government plans 4.8 trillion naira loan for proposed 12.66 trillion naira 2021 budget. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Mrs. Um, Aisha Yusufu this morning. I want to start with, um, um, before we move on to other stories, I'm going to start with the loan um, to fund our 2021 budget. Um, there's people who argue that the country is, I, I guess, broke, not being able to fund its budget, not being able to finance, um, you know, the things that should keep the country running. Um, where do you think that we stand currently? Uh, we stand, <laughs> I don't know, we are broke. It's not that, we, there's no, there are no two ways about it. And this is not the first time that we've been borrowing to, we've been borrowing to service debt over, over the years. And a, a lot of us have, have, have pointed this out. But you know, as usual, Nigerians who just want to continue what we're doing, where you make demands, you're told that, oh, you're doing this because of one thing or the other. We don't, we don't focus uh, on the issue. So it's been a long time that we've been broke. Uh, apart from we're borrowing money, there's so much, we're spending recklessly. Uh, there's so much corruption going on in this administration. We've, we've said it before and it's coming to light. Now, at the end of the day, Nigerians are suffering. I would point to the fact that, you know, recently we saw private school teachers who were coming out to make demands because, of course, COVID-19, schools are not open, salaries are not being paid. Nigerians should learn to make demands even when they think they are not personally affected because governance affects every part of our life, all of this borrowing, at the end of the days, we are the ones who are going to suffer for it. And we've continuously uh, suffered for it. What is more annoying, what is more, uh, you know, it's so perplexing is the fact that all this money that are being borrowed, yet people are looting this money indiscriminately the way they want, with impunity, knowing fully well that nothing will be done about it. But before we go on, there's a headline that at the bottom, 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 that for me, it's such um, I, I don't know. I'm so excited just reading it. Where they say 35 year old man gets life imprisonment for the filing of a two year old. I mean, it's a win win. It's, it's such a win. And because a lot of, hopefully, the, we begin to see more of this. And hopefully, this eater, the issue of sexual violence and domestic violence that we've seen uh, over time. And it's really becoming a huge major problem. The rate at which little children are being, are being molested, are being the fact by all these adults everywhere. For me, that, that's a huge one there. Um, earlier today, we also shared a special report from uh, um, or your state, you know, of a three-year-old girl who has, you know, also been sexually assaulted by her father. So I, I guess we would agree that it's a win. And um, we're looking for more, um, um, of course, a justice for these victims across the whole country. Um, I'm going to bring uh, Mr. Uh, Kingbola in now. Recovered vehicles auctioned to the presidential villa and um, ministries, says uh, Ibrahim Mago. The drama apparently continues to unfold um, in those um, areas. Also, uh, former President Goodluck Jonathan uh, visits the presidential villa, uh, says his relationship with President Buhari is cordial. Um, of course, we've already spoken about um, going to like Pabu, uh, giving 48 hours to lame, name lawmakers awarded NDTC contracts. But if there's any other ones that you would like to also quickly chip in, uh, let, let, let's hear, hear your thoughts. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, want, I would like to start with the Mago story. Uh, Nigeria has become one big, one big, huge joke. Okay. NDTC, AFCC, we've seen this before. 
There's nothing new. I mean, I was telling someone that I'm not really surprised at these revelations. If recovered vehicles were auctioned to, 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 to presidential villa and to ministers, who authorized them? So let's wait and, and see what the salami panel will come up with. I want to believe that Magu must have acted uh, on the instruction or with, I mean, based on the approval of certain senior people. And it will really be a shame if that was what happened, because I was talking about recovered assets being relooted one way or the other. So this probe is good in itself, but this probe is not the end. It's a means to an end. We are more interested in what happens with the report of the probe. If Magu is found to have abused his position, he should be punished. Whoever is involved should be punished. Talking about President, uh, former President Jonathan's visit to uh, Buhari, I mean, it, 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 it sounds suspicious to me, okay? This is the second time in the last one year or so that Dr. Jonathan is visiting Asorok. The questions are, has this visit got to do with the NDDC probe? Okay, if you look at the, the time frame that has been uh, probed, most of it fell under Dr. Jonathan's presidency. So why is he visiting Buhari now? And for God's sake, what is it that they're discussing that the public cannot know about? Okay, so for me, this visit is not coincidental. It is suspicious, and we would like to know exactly what's going on. Also, I would like to talk about this other story here on presidency um, disagreeing, okay, with the Senate on the 774,000 jobs. jobs yes. KMO has said the law doesn't allow the National Assembly to supervise him now or to dictate to him. Let me do my job. When I finish doing my job, you can prove. Why is it so difficult for us to follow due process in Nigeria? Why is it so difficult that people act over and beyond what has been defined as their role? Why is it that we cannot get things done without making a mess of the whole thing? Okay, so I mean, the laws are very clear as to what the role of National Assembly should be on this issue. So why is it becoming so much a big issue? And finally, the issue of the Tomilan Bridge closes midnight, it's so unfortunate that ever since the ABB uh, regime constructed Tomilan Bridge, we haven't done any other major bridge. So Lagos is going to be seriously on lockdown because the major bridge is going to be closed. And of course, you know the way it is, all the other alternative routes will seriously uh, be blocked. So I, I, I really feel for Lagosians at this time. Thank you. Okay, um, really interesting takes uh, there. Um, uh, let's move on to the Tribune newspapers this morning. Uh, for those who are just joining us, it's uh, off the press. And of course, it's our uh, review on the major stories uh, making headlines across the country. On the Tribune this morning, once again, 774,000 jobs. Reps give condition for release of 52 billion naira. Senate and presidency talks collapse. Or your council's third term and vacation begins July 30. Also, Issa Funtua buried. National Assembly leadership and governors, uh, Tinubu, IPI, others mourn. Um, also on the Tribune this morning, Buhari submits 2021-2023 MTEF to uh, National Assembly as it proposes 12.658 trillion Naira 2021 budget. Third, Mailand Bridge closure begins on Friday. And also on insecurity, Senate wants the service chiefs to go. Um, a pretty interesting stories, I believe, on the Tribune. Um, also, reps uh, once again give Akwabio 48 hours to review lawmakers who are NDDC contractors. Gunmen kill village head and nine others in Kaduna. Um, this is something I feel that we, we should have a conversation on this morning also. Um, the level of insecurity in southern Kaduna, I believe, uh, Ms. Aisha Yusufu, you would like to speak on that. Um, uh, the creeping, you know, and of course, um, it, it feels like it's stories like this that have been somehow ignored in the last few years. Um, every other day we hear of 11, we hear of 9, we hear of, you know, certain figures. Um, so you can quickly speak on that. 16-year-old girl killed in Ebadon also. That's uh, one of the stories on the Tribune. And the PDP scared of forensic audit of the NDDC, says the APC. So I'm going to start with um, um, Aisha Yusufo this morning. Let's have your thoughts on these stories. Uh, so, uh, so every day we, uh, in Nigeria now, every day we hear of killings. We are almost numb to to, to the the stories of people dying over time. Kaduna, most especially, has been in the news for all the wrong reasons, and it's so it, it's quite a. Uh, 
amazing that a governor, Governor Nasser Erubai, who before he became uh, a governor, would speak all the time on issues. All of a sudden, he's quiet about those killings. Even if, as the chief security officer of the state, he doesn't have power constitutionally to be able to, you know, order some of the operation and everything, but he has the power to speak out. He has the power to meet the president and say, what's going on in my state? He has the power to make the man that his people be protected. He has the power to do a whole lot of this, and he isn't doing them. And it's so sad that people are just being killed anyhow in Kaduna State. Most of them don't even make the news. And there's a need for us to, to, to make more demands because any killings anywhere, it should affect every one of us uh, in, in Nigeria. We, what we keep, what we have continuously done over the years is to embolden uh, the killers that are going on. And right now, they are they are going around different communities, and the killings are, are, are going on. They need to stop. Uh, beyond the killing, another headline here that for me uh, catches my head is the one of the death of Isa uh, Funtua. May he so may he so rest in peace. Uh, the thing is that in the last few uh, few months, we've seen lots of deaths in Nigeria, especially uh, from. Uh, about the so-called uh, VIPs, right, if I may put it uh, that way. We need to begin to look at the healthcare system. It has been neglected over the years, and COVID-19 has revealed to us the fact that, look, the rich also die. Just the way the, the masses, you know, we die and people move on, nothing happens. It's over, it's, it happens to everyone. The difference that we had between the poor and the rich had been access to good quality health care. And unfortunately, with the lockdown, we, uh, our people can't travel abroad the way they used to travel before. And now we are faced with the same health care system, even though there's still disparity, but it shows that our health care system needs to be focused on. And I don't see that coming from the government. There needs to be an emergency there. We're just focused on COVID-19. We're not even focused on the fact that we need to overhaul our healthcare system uh, to, to, to enable us to be able to have access to good quality uh, healthcare. Well, hopefully we get to learn some lessons from uh, the pandemic, you know, and, and moving forward. Um, we're going to bring in Mr. Kingbola um, last to um, help us um, um, sure. uh, wrap up. You know, quickly share your thoughts on any of them. Um, you may want to start okay. with Southern Kaduna and the issues uh, concerning killings that have, you know, continued over there. Uh, well, um, um, I just have spoken extensively on that. I want to go uh, to a very small headline that you omitted, the AKT PDP crisis, Fire share or Jimmy in verbal war over viral or second video. I, it's, it's, it's sickening. I, 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 I saw the video on Monday. Uh, some members of the PDP swearing out of allegiance to former governor of the state, uh, Dr. Uh, Ayo Fayoshi. And I was just like, people will do anything to get power in Nigeria. Swearing and hurt to, to an individual and not even to a state. So invariably, the, uh, the, the allegiance of these guys would be to the governor and not to the state. And it, 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 it speaks volume of the kind of politicians we have in Nigeria today. On Akpabio, um, if you give him one year to produce the list, nothing will come out of it. He's dead on arrival. Anyway, the Speaker of the House has said that the, 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 the probe is going to be suspended indefinitely. So which list is Akpabio bringing? We're just joking. We like to play too much in Nigeria. Does anybody expect Akwabio to name names? Of course he won't, because he has also been part of this show mm -hmm. of shame. So I'm not really expecting anything from me. I mean, like, and like she said at the beginning of this program, they are taking us for a ride. They're taking us for granted. They know they like to excite us with this headline. Nothing is going to come out of the NDC probe. Nothing. You can take that to the bank. Nothing, because we've seen this before. It's a, it's, it's, it's a familiar terrain that we worked before. We, we, we blow all the grammar and nothing happens. All nothing right. will happen. I can assure you. So okay. sad. Um, that's all the time we have um, in our um, of the press this morning. I would like to say a big thank you to Mr. Demola Kingbola, uh, publisher of the Podium Media. Thank, thank you. you so much for speaking with us and sharing your thoughts thank with you. us on these stories. Also, uh, Mrs. Aisha Yesufu, always a pleasure speaking with you. Um, we hope to, of course, bring you in again as quickly as possible. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure being here always. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. You too. And um, stay with us at 9 o'clock. Uh, top of the hour, we have, of course, uh, more news updates coming your way. Good morning.